Hi students, you are watching Biology for All with Dr. Mahmood. We have already discussed glycolysis and Krebs cycles in our previous videos. Your feedback on those videos was very positive and your appreciation has led me to make another video which is actually the third and final step that ultimately leads to ATP formation inside mitochondria. This is called electron transport chain. The goal of electron transport chain is to couple energy stored in electron acceptor to a proton gradient that drives ATP synthesis. This is a complex topic and not very many biology teachers are able to explain it to their students. However, after watching this video, you will feel so enlightened that the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation will not remain a mystery for you anymore. You will be able to draw it yourself and will not need the help of any teacher. So watch this video till end and also subscribe to my channel Biology for All. Now we come to our topic. First, you have to understand the design of electron transport chain so you have an idea as to how it works. You are watching inner mitochondrial membrane in this slide. The bottom portion of the slide represents mitochondrial matrix and the top represents intermembrane space. There is a series of complexes shown here in different colors. These complexes are numbered from 1 to 5. The last of these complex, complex 5, is known as ATP synthase. The complex part from 1 to 4 is known as electron transport chain because these complexes pump protons in the intermembrane space and shuffle electrons from one complex to the other. The ATP synthase that pumps down proton from intermembrane space back to the mitochondrial matrix is technically known as chemiosmosis. Electron transport chain starts when NADH approaches complex 1. This complex is called as NADH dehydrogenase. NADHH gives up its proton and donates its electron to the complex 1. The complex 1 then becomes highly energized. This supercharged form of complex 1 is shown here in the form of the yellow border. It is energized to such an extent that it can now pump protons from mitochondrial matrix to inner membrane space. As more and more protons are pumped from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space, a proton gradient starts developing on both sides of the membrane. Complex 1 then passes its electron to coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q is not a part of any complex but is a mobile intrinsic molecule. While this process is going on in complex 1, FADH that was produced during the Krebs cycle donates its electron to complex 2. Complex 2, however, is not supercharged and does not pump out protons to intermembrane space. It rather transfers its electron to coenzyme Q. It is very important to know that NADHH works only on complex 1, whereas FADHH can bind specifically to complex 2. Complex 1 and complex 2 transfer their electrons to coenzyme Q, which is a common electron acceptor. Coenzyme Q then transfers these electrons to cytochrome B in complex 3, which is also named as cytochrome BC1 complex. Oxidation reduction cycle of coenzyme Q continues as it passes electrons from complex 1 and complex 2 to cytochrome B in complex 3. After receiving electrons, complex 3 also becomes supercharged. Now it has a high potential energy to pump more protons from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space. This results in the further accumulation of protons and building up a difference of proton gradient on both sides of the membrane. 
Within complex 3, cytochrome B passes its electron to cytochrome C1 through FES. Like coenzyme Q, cytochrome C is also a mobile molecule within the membrane. It transfers its electrons to complex 4, which is the final electron acceptor and is known as cytochrome C oxidase complex. On receiving the electrons, complex 4 also becomes supercharged. Just like complex 1 and 3, it can also pump protons from mitochondrial matrix to the inner membrane space. This results up building up a very strong proton gradient across the membrane. Intermembrane space is now laden with electrons. At this stage, complex 4 needs to pass electrons to final electron acceptor. The final electron acceptor is oxygen, which on receiving electrons splits into two oxygen ions and protons are added, creating two water molecules. Formation of the water ends up electron transport chain. The next step is chemiosmosis. An extremely high influx of protons present in the intermembrane space moves down the gradient through complex 5 called ATP synthase. This catalyzes the formation of ATP from ADP. The cycle continues as protons pump through complex 1, 3 and 4 flow down the hill through ATP synthase back into the mitochondrial matrix and a large amount of ATP are formed as glucose molecules are broken down to carbon dioxide and water.